One of the pleasures of the Keats Shelley Prizes every year is that they reinforce the dialogue between romanticism and contemporary writing, contemporary writing and thinking, perhaps we should say, um, because of the essay uh, category as well as the poetry category. It's one of my great beliefs that, po that culture is not um, created in a vacuum, but arises from dialogue between eras, countries and continents. And <clears throat> so it's a great pleasure to see this year's theme, Ode, being addressed with such seriousness and so fully engaged, and to see so much of the wider romantic tradition coming through in the poetry and the essays that have been submitted this year. It's my privilege to announce the winners. And starting with the adult poems, the winner is December Moth Outside a Care Home Window. It's a poem which is full of linguistic relish and brilliant imagery, and there are some really exceptional phrase making, which builds to the last line with its glowing impassable threshold. That's high stakes writing, which has been fully achieved by the quality of observation, a kind of forensic observation throughout the poem. Um, the result is a very rich study of will and intention in a moth, but also that kind of aha of recognition for any of us who have um, watched a moth attracted to a window or to the light, but um, also for any of us who have that sense of the inescapable nature of our desire to attempt and attempt again and attempt again. It's a dreamlike setting which is somehow echoed in our very fine runners-up. In alphabetical order, they are Lost and The Walls of Chernobyl. Lost is a very smartly subtle confessional poem. It touches on huge issues, loss, identity, possibly even abuse. But it does all of this with economy and discipline and a kind of classical diction, though not in the strict sense of the word, which is all the more um, moving for its focus and discipline. It's a truly engaging poem. So is The Walls of Chernobyl, which ranges with ambition over a landscape which is really fully imagined and touches on contemporary themes of war and ecological destruction and touches on them with particular resonance given that Chernobyl is in Ukraine and we are all currently witnessing a war in which both uh, nuclear installations are under threat and nuclear arms are threatened. So a hugely topical poem with much wider resonance also. Our young poets have produced some extraordinary work this year. And the winner in this category is Ode to the Motherland. I like the way this poem takes the notion of Ode very seriously, but I like enormously and admire enormously the way the poem harnesses its its intentions, its exceptional technique, and its feeling for socially political socially politically significant topic. It's a poem about belonging and not belonging. It's a poem about place. It's immensely powerful. It's intensely musical and it uses musicality as rhetoric, knowingly, which sustains a sense of movement. Both of those, that sense of musicality's rhetoric and that sense of movement are very Shellian. You think of something like the Ode to the West Wind. And in its engagement with a, a socio-politically significant topic, in its feelingful quality of engagement, it too exhibits romantic um, characteristics. This is an um, extraordinary poem, which um, um, I hope to see published very soon. And the runner-up in the young poet category is Elegy for Hedgehog. This is um, wry and perceptive. It's a reflection on mutability. And it moves past mere description once again to imaginative reconstruction. So that <clears throat> we have a, a, a lost, a dead hedgehog, and then in a sense an imaginative revival of that hedgehog. It's an intimate and charming piece. So we move now to the adult essayists. And the winner in this category is Shelley and Afterlives. This field was very strong in general. The, the essays were very strong and scholarly of 
immense interest and each of the making a each of the shortlistees making a significant contribution to Keats and Shelley studies to romantic studies but here the Shelley and Afterlives is a standout winner because it it really comprehends the resources, the essay form also. So it's it's taken the pressing contemporary theme of climate emergency and unpacked the ecological ideas in Shelley's work. And of course, it's done that with great scholarliness and with great lucidity, but it's also understood the essay as a form of thought rather than only an exercise in um, archival research or close reading. That's to say there is a, um, there's a sense of an intellectual story arc to this essay, which is a great achievement in, in this concentrated form. There are two runners up in this category and they are in alphabetical order, gone with the west wind and of poets, dreamers and doctors. And these two very fine papers, one couldn't, as it were, thread a paper, a match paper between them. I mean, they are both highly articulated, scholarly, professional, and um, more than deserve publication, uh, which I look forward to. Not forgetting, however, the young essayists. And here again, we have an extraordinary winner. The winner of the young essayists section is Shelley Lives On. And true to its title, it's a brilliant piece of work which seeks out traces of Shelley in contemporary culture. So there are photographs, there are traces of uh, graffiti, of advertising, of found material. And the originality of this approach and the originality of the research, this has not been a question of um, one of our young scholars simply visiting the library. They've done much more than that. They've made the topic entirely their own although their, their research remains thoroughly underpinned by scholarly technique. And along that, alongside all of that, that kind of originality, there's a sophistication in the writing, which makes the whole project exceptionally exciting. One has a sense of Shelley studies being brought right up to date with real engagement. Our runner-up here is Key Seja. This is an essay which has enthusiasm, range, and depth. It has the, the all the hallmarks of an original thinker, and possibly, I think, perhaps a developing literary writer. It's really well argued, and it's really feelingful. Again, again, the essayistic nature of the form has been embraced, and I would say that this is the kind of com emerging communicator that Romanticism needs. So, in both these essays. As with all our winners, there's an extraordinarily exciting sense of potential for romanticism. Romantic studies and writing which honours romantic tradition has never, I suspect, been in better health. And all these shortlisted um, pieces of work and indeed all the contributing writers, all the writers who've entered the prizes this year have demonstrated the liveness of that communication between the late 18th, the early 19th centuries and the early 21st century and the necessity of our rapport. All that we can learn in terms of radicalism, risk, but intelligence and deep seated thinking in both verse and essay comes to the fore in our prize winners. My congratulations to all of them. Thank you for listening to this Keats Shelley podcast for the Keats Shelley and De Young Romantics Writing Prizes. For more news about this year's prize, please visit our website, keatshelley.org forward slash prizes, or follow us on Twitter at Keith Shelley.